Niggas must have forgot their alphabet Let me explain, here it goes A's for ambition, be what I wanna be See past the situation that's in front of me Doubt is an enemy, Zep we say fuck em The irony is they inspire me to love em G is past go with ignite the cash flow When eights is put your heart in whatever's your last hope I is I inspire but two light the fire So we be the streets number one supplier And jazz for them daughters for my niggas when I make it Give me two of those strange no name kicks Earth wind and fire type, elemental no beast that resembles me and it recounts for LMNOP You the track up like Welcome back Eternal Dragon here with my latest build A Bogbarian Warp Slap Why is he Warp Slap? Because he slaps at such high speeds It's absolutely ridiculous And the best part is With slightly better gear that maybe you could farm He could slap even faster But I'll show you what we've got You saw the demo So what we're working with primarily as our main weapon is a rage handle. We've got a couple fantastic ones here for the build. We're focusing on the poison one because we are abusing a whole bunch of the bog variants poison skills as well to increase our damage. And it also has a fantastic DOT on this weapon you see. 1189 in poison. Not bad at all for a DOT on a weapon. Well, on a melee weapon. <laughs> So we're using a live wire, of course, and that is to chain our damage to other enemies. Now, live wire chains no longer scale off of melee. Uh, they got to change. So now they are scaling off of all damage and elemental. So you're not getting all of your melee damage that you could have chained before, but you are still getting a lot of damage chaining around with this build. Completely still worth using this. And when you're mobbing, you can switch over to this one. It'll help pull mob groups together just so that you can focus on doing a little bit more damage in a contained area with your blast chills. And this would be more for the bossing, but I mean, you can use either for whatever you want. Maybe you switch back to this if you run into a badass. Now, we've put a last rights on the build. This is mainly for Bernadette. No joke, this is mainly just for her. You can kill pretty much any boss in the game with the setup, with the way that I have uh, given you a bunch of extra life. So that when your life goes down below half, you're going to bring a skeep out. The skeep will circle around you, healing you. You can probably get one or two full heals off of the skeep. And then if you do go down, you can kill the skeep to get back up again. And then we are using a marshmallow, which when it explodes actually generates health pickups for you as well. So you have a bunch of additional healing on the build between these two items. We do have a ruby spite. You can use this if you want as well. It was just like a fourth gun that actually works fairly well for the build, but it's not anything that we're focusing on. As with the Rage Handle, you see we have the enchantment plus 10% melee damage gain for a short duration for each consecutive melee attack. With the Rage Handle special ability that melee attacks increase your melee attack speed and melee critical chance by 11.3% for 5 seconds, stacking 15 times. And then warrior melee attacks increase your damage reduction and melee damage dealt by 8% for 10 seconds. Stacks 5 times. So that weapon just gets going really quick when you're attacking. And then we've put 5 out of 5 down here into Iron Squall. And this is where I was saying if you could get yourself some armor that has another 5, you could give yourself 10 out of 5 in Iron Squall. You could melee attack even faster, just going absolutely crazy. Of course, that's with any points into Iron Squall, but, you know, 5 would be the ideal roll there for maximum speed. So, you see, we have used Action Skill Start. Increase your melee damage for 40% here. And uh, we've already talked about the stacking melee hit damage there. This is after Reload, Singularities. They're pretty good. They usually hit for about what you hit for with your melee hit. It says 1475. But, you know, you see how, the, like, we got 1367, so it's going to scale sort of about the same way. Pull all the enemies in for easier blast chill boosts, or blast chill bursts. And then here, you know, of course, on spell cast, increase frost damage. Why? Because it's a frost gun. And then here, after getting a gun kill, this is just sort of a fun enchantment that I like to use for a lot of things. Uh, especially on this build, getting the extra melee damage. Movement speed instead of using the live wire, if you wanted to be doing it this way. We got an Ascended Shark Lesson Ring. Thank you, Grey Wolf. <laughs> this thing is phenomenal. 25% melee damage. It's got that 15% rotating melee damage bonus. And then we've got the melee critical hit damage and action skill cooldown rate on here. 
And the second ring, I have gone with a melee damage, melee critical hit chance, and that's why we're wearing this ring. Uh, I do have additional Shark Lesson rings, but we went with this one because of the melee critical hit chance. I really wanted that extra boost for the build, along with the melee critical hit damage on there as well. Now, our armor this time around is a paradigm with gun damage and all damage dealt. We are boosting our melee damage with our ability damage, and that is one of the primary reasons that we have ability damage on spellcast here, as well as the fact that it will be boosting up our blast chill quite a lot. You want to boost up the bonuses that you are getting from the armor here. The extra gun damage, of course, now making the guns quite viable when you use them. You know, you won't use them much, but when you do use them, you will find them very viable. Main shield here, we have the bad egg. And while action skill is active, we're increasing our elemental damage by 35%. And when your shield gets broken here, you get 35% bonus dark magic to your melee. That helps keep you alive as well. Additional movement speed here as well, so just keep you zipping around anytime your shield is down. We, of course, have also gotten it with Brimming to fill our life back up when the shield is full. And Nova, so that when the shield breaks, it can, in fact, kill your Skeep and get you back up immediately. That's one of my favorite little tricks, and we've included it on the build here for extra survivability. So, other weapons that are on the build, I've got uh, a couple extra rage handles here. They're both fantastic but we are focusing on the poison one as it can trigger our bog down, which is also going to be getting a lot more damage or giving a lot more damage sorry, to our Rage of the Ancients as every time we splash, we are going to increase the amount of damage that we can deal with Frost by quite a bit. So that covers all the items on the build here. And we'll go on over to the skills and look at them in depth a little bit. We are Berserker Blightcaller. So we have Rage of the Ancients as one of our class skills. And we have Whisper of Rot as the other one. Whisper of Rot being the new one applying a status effect. Increases elemental damage for a short duration. This is fantastic for what we are doing. An insane amount of elemental damage and boosting up Blast Chill quite a bit. And it is of course hitting for ability. Whereas Blast Chill, I've mentioned it quite a few times. You see it's frost ability damage frost of course being an element so you're getting elemental damage boost there as well so these two are going to feed into each other very nicely you can in fact use the bog totem if you want to but i get the best results with plague storm it's a super duper fun ability and every time that you apply non-ability damage a percentage of it gets stored up you can read it all right there so basically you're going to be blast chilling for a huge amount of damage, and then every time you're doing non-ability damage, which is primarily your elemental damage, that's going to go up into the Plague Storm, and then the Plague Storm is going to do even stronger bolts for you. So the faster you slap, the more damage you do, the stronger the Plague Storm gets. It, they just feed into each other absolutely brilliantly. It's tons of fun. So over here on the Berserker side, we have, of course, increased our Frost damage as much as possible. And we have increased our melee damage and enraged duration as much as possible. Then we've gone Oath of the Old Ways so that we get bonus damage reduction and damage the closer we are to an enemy. Perfect for melee. 3 to 3 Icebreaker. This is another skill that, say, if you got 6 out of 3 in here, you could really crank the damage up on the build. Anytime you freeze an enemy, you get additional damage on them. And then Cold Snap for movement speed and frost efficiency. Skipping everything in here, going down to 5 out of 5 Iron Squall for extra attack speed. And then we have the armor giving us an extra point into Blast Chill, so we have 2 out of 1 in Blast Chill. 20% chance to do 50% of our melee damage, boosted up with ability damage and elemental damage. You've seen the hits coming off of this thing absolutely crazy. And then Blood of the Fallen. This is so that, as you can see, our remaining action skill cooldown gets reduced with our melee kills so that we can use our Plague Storm a lot more often. Over here, we've gone 5 out of 5 into Virulence to make sure that we're getting those dots absolutely all the time so that we can be feeding our Plague Storm really, really well and just, you know, making sure that we're making the best possible use of all the elemental damage that we are dealing. 1 out of 5 into Geist in the Shell here. This is just here so that when you do switch over to guns, you can fire the Geists. Uh, the live wire can fire it fairly often as well. It is some nice extra bonus damage. I definitely recommend having a point here for the build. And then 5 out of 5 in Decay, pumping up our poison damage. 
We didn't touch this. Then going over here, worst curse. Every time we do dark magic damage, that's coming off of our shield when it breaks. We increase our spell damage and our ability damage. So the marshmallow does more damage. Our blast kill does more damage. Our plague storm does more damage. Four out of three here in frostbite. And that's so every time we're applying a frost status effect, which we do all the time. And of course here as well. When we get our dark magic, it applies right away. You see we get a melee damage increase, critical hit chance increase. And so that's what helps just get those massive, massive hits after you get two or three swings in on an enemy. And finally, bogged down. We are using that poison weapon so that we can constantly get soaked on whatever we are attacking. And then the enemy again will take even more damage from our elemental frost, which is going to be coming off of Rage of the Ancients. So, looking at our myth rank, we have 40 out of 40 into strength. Uh, I didn't touch critical hit chance. Seems like we really didn't need it for this build. I put the rest pretty much over here into status damage and a bit into attunement for the skill cooldown. Want to use that plague storm as much as possible. Finally, the myth rank. We are at 818. So that's the build, folks. I hope you enjoy it. Of course, the save will be in the Discord. This is a brand new save file for you, so you don't have to worry about it overlapping with anything else. I've not released this one before. One other thing that I do just want to point out on the build, I'm remembering, last thing, last second. <laughs> There's an Ascended Smithy's Ire. You can use this if you don't like the Marshmallow. It's a lot of fun. It's not quite as good, but it's pretty cool to use. Bounces around, hammers everywhere. Good times. So, can't wait to see you guys when I play live. Until the next time, happy gaming.